Welcome everybody. Um, this training session is about FICA and FIC, the most exciting training of the year. It's my favorite. I know you guys have all logged in especially for it. I've got to let Gary in. I don't want you to miss one second of it. The other thing we just need to talk about quick sticks is um, Jenny has asked me to just, just to um, explain to you guys the um, I'm not sure I'm going to get it exactly right, but what, what happens with uh, people who, who speak to their private banker? Now, what, what happens with a private bank is the bank knows that they, and this is, okay, let's start from the beginning. Your client's going to say to you, no, no, I don't need PFS. I don't need a bond originator. I have got a private banker. Okay, then you need to put on this look like, huh? are you crazy? And the reason that you're going to ask them if they're crazy is simply because the, uh, a private banker has got no incentive to get them a good rate. Do you understand? The, the private banker's job is to make the bank money, not to make the client wealthy. Believe it or not, the guy works for the bank. He's not going to go out of his way to help a client at the expense of his job. So what he's going to do is put it into the system and the, ba and the banker already knows that they have got a captive client. So if I go to my private banker, hello, Bob, it's Anton. Hi, yo, I'm looking for a bond. He's going to say, okay, I'm going to help you. I'm going to do the best I can. And he is going to do the best he can, but he's going to do the best he can for me and the bank. What happens if you say, send it to Jenny, it's slightly different though. Now what you need to say to your client is, that's okay. Go to your private bank at FNB, but please let, allow Jenny to go to the other banks, the three other banks or four other banks, as many other banks as she can find. Why? Because when Jenny submits a, and this is what you can explain to your client, when Jenny submits a um, application, to the banks they know that there's competition for the deal they know that she's not going to one banker one rate one locked in client they know that pfs is going to every bank out there everybody that's got money to lend they're going to go to them and the banks then under pressure immediately to give your client the best possible rate okay so the downside of this is what your clients often do is they they say okay no let jenny go let her do her job and we'll see what my bank comes up with and their bank comes up with prime plus nine uh, and they have to pay a 50% deposit. And Jenny comes back with prime minus three without a deposit. I mean, which deal are they going to take? They're going to want to take Jenny's deal, but they don't. They go back to the bank and say, oh, look what I can get somewhere else. And their banker begrudgingly gives them that matches the deal. And then they come back to Jenny and say, oh, Jenny, my bank's matched it. And Jenny goes back and gets a better rate. And then they horse trade the deal through the system like that. Okay, now this is not good. This is horse trading. This is not what you should be doing. So you, it's a very delicate balance. So you want the client to give the work to Jenny and go to their bank. But what you don't want them to do, you don't want them to horse trade Jenny's uh, work for their own thing and then cut her out the deal. It's not fair. I mean, Jenny works flipping hard to get four banks to agree on something or to give a proposal and then for the guy to undercut you. So it's, it's better for the guy to say, so the, the actual thing to say to him is, listen, let Jenny go to the four banks first. Let her get the best rate. Why? Because then the four banks know that she is in competition, they are in competition with the other banks. Okay, don't talk to your private banker. Let us talk to everybody first. And then you get the best possible rate you can out of your own bank because they are under pressure for turnover. They're under pressure for uh, in terms of competition. Okay, then if they go to their bank or often say, oh, can you beat this? He's gonna say, no, I can never beat it. Okay, so do it the other way around. Please try and help PFS. It's just a bit, uh, it must be usually frustrating when Jenny does the work and then they just uh, use it to horse trade off their own, you know, with their own banker. And what you, the other thing that you need to explain to your client is that a private banker uses the same system that Jenny uses. He logs on as a client and he types in, I want, he's got no personal connection with her. He doesn't walk into the vault, go and grab a fistful of dollars and come out and give it to the client. Yeah, I did a deal for you. No, he enters the banking channel through the same way. But when he enters the banking channel, it's the bank doing the bank's work. When Jenny enters the banking channel, it's competition with four other banks. Okay, so bear that in mind. Right, so we've discussed um, our turnover, which is fantastic. Thank you, guys. And we've, we, we've discussed how to deal with, um, um, and Jenny, maybe what you can do is just, if you want to send out an email clarifying that, because I've probably got it wrong uh, in some or two ways, or maybe you can add a bit more clarity to it, and that'll be lacquer. Thank you. But guys, just pay attention to your clients. Right, the next thing we're going to do is the most exciting. I'm so excited. Uh, this is the best part of my whole year, guys, when we get to do FICA training. I love FICA. I'm just going to share the screen. I've got so many screens up now. Um, you should be able to see that one now. 
Am I right? Lovely. Okay, so we've got TICA, the Financial Intelligence Center Act. Um, this is not a, a, a okay. So the, the first thing is the reason that we do FICA training is not because I believe it or not, I actually uh, don't enjoy FICA as much as I claim to. So that's the first thing. My lies will be outed eventually. So it is a bit of a frustrating thing, but the reason that we do it is this is not volition here. We don't have an option to train FICA or not. In terms of the act, it says you will train your people and the EAB says the same thing. If, the, the, if I can't prove that we have trained for FICA, uh, and I think it's every quarter, then we are in contravention of the act. Okay, so we have to pay attention to it. And this is why once a year we have a big splash and I'm gonna, this is, uh, there is a test as you know, and I'm going to give you the test and you're going to pass the test and then we're all going to be uh, live happily for another six months until we have the need to do FICA one more time. So what is FICA? Okay, why do we need to do this? Well, what are the, one of the things we need to do it for is because you need to protect yourself. The fines, are, <laughs> the fines and uh, uh, sanction surrounding um, uh, terrorism and money laundering is are enormous. You know, they talk about 10 million rand and 10 years in jail type of stuff. They don't, they don't mess around you. This is not like a stern warning, you know, that you get. So that's the first thing. So the reason that you want to be part of this is because you have to be, you have to know what you're doing here. Otherwise you are liable for sanction and the sanctions are heavy. So bear that in mind. Okay. So what is money laundering? Well, we all know what money laundering is. Money laundering is when you take, when you're using money outside of the natural channel outside of the regulated channel. And who does money laundering? Well, that's obvious. Uh, the biggest uh, way to money launder is in art, yes, and uh, in property. Now, if you're wondering about art, and I'll talk about art like um, vintage cars, uh, collectibles, art. You know, if you look at one of these Rembrandts, or not even a Rembrandt, because they've got value, but you, uh, there's one, the, the most expensive uh, drawing, uh, painting ever sold uh, at that time, was a blue line across a page. It was a simple blue line. And it fits something like $50 million. Now, Google it and have a look at that. Now, they, I don't know anything about art, but I can tell you now, I, can, I could do that. There is no artistic merit in that. That's called money laundering. Okay, so if I want to get rid of $50 million, what do I do? I buy a painting for it for $10 million, and then I sell it to you for $20 million, And now there's a legitimate item of transaction and the money is becoming legitimized. And same in, in, in property. When people say, I'm gonna put it on a cash deposit of 200,000 Rand, or they, they, uh, and they don't argue about the price ever. Now I'm happy to pay 5 million Rand, no problem. It's all gonna be cash. Okay, and that's the, so what, what the governments of the world says is, okay, we've got, to, we've got to find out. Firstly, who is this person doing the transaction, where the money is coming from, where the money is going to, and is it a, a proper um, a transaction that, that makes sense? Now, fortunately for us, we don't have to take part in any of that. Okay, why? Because we're not receiving the money. In this practice, we don't receive money. All the money gets paid into the trust account of the attorneys. Okay, I don't receive money into my trust account. The rental guys, the money gets received into the pay prop trust account. Okay, it's still my trust account, the pay prop one, but the, 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 the sales one is not our trust account. Why is this important? Because if a person wants to pay cash uh, as a, de a deposit, we can do that. It's fine, pay the cash, but pay it into the trust account. Okay, and then the onus falls on the attorneys to report the cash transaction more than, who knows the amount? Come on, say it out loud. 25,000. Yeah, what does the, the act actually say? You're not wrong, but what does it actually say? Come on. It must be reported. Uh -uh. What's the amount, the actual amount they say? Okay, it's 24,999 rand and 99 cents. After that, you have to report it. <laughs> and that, by the way, is a trick question in your PDE exam. So it's not 25, it's 24,999.99. Okay, so money laundering is something that we have to uh, uh, prevent. And, um, and, uh, and the reason is that it's linked to terrorism. So we know that. Okay, now there's a whole lot of things. Myro, just know this name, is the money laundering reporting officer. Who's the Myro in our, in our business? Any guesses? 
Yes, that's right. I'm the Myra. And I, I think, Angela, is that right? I think I am. Yeah, I am the Myra. Actually, I'm dead sure I'm the Myra. Okay, and I, I'm responsible for all of the reporting on these things. Okay, so that's my job. So when you when you get uh, 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 there's a, a problem or, or something that you're worried about, you've got to come to me and say, hey, this thing is a worrying transaction. There's something wrong. And quite often we have, I, I have a lot of agents coming to me and saying, hey, this is dodgy. This is dodgy. This is a, a expat. He's a Central African guy. He wants to pay cash. Um, he wants to sign the deal today. He doesn't even want to see the building. And what should I do? Well, what's the answer? The answer, you take the money and you sign the deal today and you do the business. Why? Because that's what we do for a living. The reporting comes afterwards. There is nowhere in this act that says you're not allowed to take anything. It's wrong. Don't take it if you suspect. You're not the judge, the jury. You don't know. You don't judge the person. If he's the prince of Brunei and he's the, the crown prince and he's flying in in a private jet and he can hardly walk with a big black bag full of dollars, you've got absolutely no right or responsibility to judge what's happening. The only thing you need to do is follow the law, which is report it. But if you say to him, lack a black bag that full of dollars, I like it, put it in APSA ban into the trust account of NGL, your job is fine. No reporting from your side. Okay. If you put it in the boot of your car, you have transgressed about a hundred laws and you will go to jail forever. Okay. So don't take money, even 50 Rand from a tenant, don't take it. You don't want to do that. Um we have to be, we have to be uh, every year uh, between Angela and our accountants, they register us uh, at FIC. We get a new PIN number, I think, or an old PIN number that's updated. We have to tell them that Anton is still the Myro, that we're still reporting and we're still doing everything right. And I look, yeah, principal must ensure that all staff members have been trained and understand the requirements. That's important. Okay, it's my responsibility to um, make sure that you understand. And not only that, I have to give you a checklist for every transaction that you do. And you know what the checklist is. Now, I'm gonna, I will send you this so you don't have to panic. So you can read it at your leisure because I know that you guys are chomping at the bit to snuggle up with a hot cup of Milo and to read through the FIC document. I might even attach the act if I think that you guys have been really sharp today and then you can read it in great detail okay but we'll we'll see so what what is it though what is it that we we, we need to that you need to understand i just must tell you this look at the first one there the first one says we do not stop transactions okay they won't stop anything uh, you don't have to put it this way you don't have to stop doing a transaction because it's dodgy that's the only thing you need to remember Cash is good. A guy walks up to you with a black bag of 2 million rand and says, yeah, I want to buy a house. You say, lacquer, put it in the bank. The deal's done. Okay, that's the first thing. Okay, so FIC wants you to proceed with all transactions where the money is clean or not. Okay, do you understand? They want you to do the deal, but they want you to report it. Okay. And read the bottom one very carefully. It is not your duty to establish where the money comes from. It's only your duty to report the transaction. And it's not even your duty. You only have to say to me, Anton, this is the dodgiest stuff I've ever checked. This guy says he's the Prince of Brunei, but he's actually a woman. He's not even South African. He's got money. It's in dollars. It's in a black bag. He wants to pay it in cash. He doesn't want a receipt. He doesn't want his name on the transaction. All of this stuff is like red flags. So do you say yes to everything? No problem. And then you make it Kerry's problem. Okay, in general. Right. Are there any questions at this point about that part of the that brief overview? Sorry, I didn't. No? Lovely. There's some questions here. No sound. There was sound. Okay, now we're back on track. Right, so next part of this, very simply, I'm going to share my screen one more time. You see how good I am at sharing screens, guys. I think I should get some kind of award. Okay, so what did we do? Remember what the, they said that the Myra of any organization has to, first of all, train everybody in the organization and secondly, provide some kind of paperwork. Can you still hear me? The, 
Somebody wave if you can hear me. Nobody can hear me. Can you? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. I've got a message saying the internet's becoming unstable. Okay, so what is it that this document is then? And you can see this one, the Inexia B. The Inexia has got two parts, the seller's one and the purchaser's one. Why? Because we have to know who we're dealing with. Now, remember the one rule, the golden rule, the first rule about uh, this is that you have to actually engage in FIC uh, uh, immediately that you engage with your client. So, and I've used this example before, if you walk into a, a Pirates rugby club at four o'clock on a Friday afternoon and you have 11 beers and the guy next to you says, thank you for buying me the beers. I wish I could sell my house. And you say, I'm an agent. And he goes, awesome, you're my guy. What can you do for me? The next thing out your mouth has to be, give me your ID book and your FICA documents. That's what the act says. So immediately you engage in a client. Before anything happens, you have to FICA them. Now, we don't do that. What we do is only on a sole mandate do we get FICA. And it is the industry norm. And, it, and the EAB must sanction it because they know about it. So I don't know how to fix that. Because to ask anybody that you bump into for the FICA documents is going to be a little bit tedious. Okay, and I'm sure you understand that. So what is this document? So it's a declaration by the buyer or the seller. It makes no difference who they are. Full names, passport number, address, telephone, cell number. They just fill this in. Guys, I get these things back and Angela gets them back and they're not filled in properly. It, it, it's a criminal offense. Don't, don't not fill it in. It's a criminal offense, not for the person. It's for you, a criminal offense. Because the act says that you have to get the data. And who knows what KYC means? Please, shout it out. No, Sean, I know you want to say it. No, your client. <laughs> <laughs> Well then, Shanae. Shanae's getting good at this and she's won a lot of money out of this, this training from being on top of it. Okay, KYC is know your client. So what Fick is asking you actually is that you have to KYC everybody that you're dealing with. So you've got to know your client. What does know your client mean? It means what's their name? What's their address? You know, and can you verify it? So if they give you a copy of their ID and it's a photostated copy and it's not clear, that's not KYC. What you need to do is give me your ID book and the copy. Yes, they're fine. Or give me your ID book. I'll make the copy even better. Okay. If your client's in Durban and you're in Johannesburg and they email you a copy of your of their uh, ID and the um, proof of address, have you KYC'd your client? Do this. All of you do this. Yes, you haven't KYC the client because at least you need to see them. Okay, you need to at least then have a FaceTime with them on WhatsApp or on Zoom or some program. Look at them and say, do you look like, you don't look like this, bro. What's this? No, I was much younger then. Yes, and were you a woman too then when you were much younger? Well, nice change there. Excellent work. Okay, so we're going to do this properly. We'll look at you. We'll look at the ID you sent us. And that's how you, at least you have attempted to know your client. You can't just get a phone call. Oh, I'll send you my ID. Okay, lack I've got everything and move on. You haven't even read the ID. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So this is where it gets important. Are you acting on behalf of another person? Now, when you're identifying, when you know your client, so if I'm buying a property, what do you need to know about me? You need my name and ID number. That's who I am. You need to verify that in some way. And the way you verify that is simply to uh, have a look at my face and have a look at the ID card and try and decide whether that's good enough. If it's not good enough, get another one. Get another one until you're satisfied. But we, we accept people for what they think, unless it's dodgy. So this act also says that if there's no reason to be suspicious, then don't be suspicious. Now, if the guy's a, a teacher at uh, Funder Bale Park Primary School and he's been teaching there for 15 years and he sends you an ID book, you don't say to him, I don't believe you. Come and see me face to face. I mean, if the guy's Kali Fantonda, teacher, and you can look him up on Facebook and he's Kali Fantonda and he's got children around him at school playing cricket, then it looks like he's a teacher. That's good enough. The other people that are of low risk are people that are professionals. If the guy's a doctor and he's a qualified doctor and you can see he's a doctor, then he's fun. An accountant, teacher, anybody who's a professional, because they're linked to professional bodies, are deemed to be less of a risk. Same as listed companies. So if a guy works for SAB Miller, you're pretty sure, and he is, and you get a payslip from SAB Million, they confirm he works there, you can assume that, that that's true. I thought Kelly was retiring in 2021. 
Kelly is never leaving us. <laughs> um, are you acting uh, the name of the jersey person you're acting for? So yes, I can buy a house for Gary and Gary can have a company he wants to put it in. So who am I acting for? The company. What's the company's name? What's the instr instrument of authority? The instrument of this authority. What does that mean? What is the instrument of this authority mean? It means what gives me the right to act for the company? So what can that be? That can be a what? Anybody know? A resolution from a trust? A, the minutes of a director's meeting? Eh? Minutes of the members of a CC? Or a minutes of a shareholders meeting? Of okay. a trust letter of authority. A letter of authority from the trust, but they still need a they still need a resolution of trustees to act. Huh? Is the party anonymous or using fictitious names? Okay, they ha you have to you have to ask that question, and it's a good question to ask. And you sometimes don't want another answer, but obviously you're going to write down whatever they say. If the person says yes, I'm using a fictitious name, you record it, you do the transaction, and you report it. You don't say, hey, got you out, not doing the deal. Uh -uh. Take the commission, do the deal, report it. Okay. Have you been employed as a politician? They want to know if the person's politically exposed and where does your source of wealth come from? And people say, no, I'm royalty. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a politician's wife. I'm married to the Minister of Education. I am a ESCOM board member's husband. Whatever the, the thing is, that's what politically exposed means. And then you record it. Okay. Supporting documents, if it's an individual, you see this one here, this column, this first column. Individual, you need a passport, a rates bill, or an insurance or rates levy, or motor vehicle license, or home affairs, tax. Those are the options. If it's a trust, you need the trustees, representatives, ID and FICA, plus you need a resolution from the trust, plus the letters of authority, plus the deed of trusts, plus the accounting officer, proof of address of the trust. So it gets hard when you're dealing with trust. You need a lot of information. But you don't need, okay, never mind. Let's just carry on. PTY and closed corporation, same, same. They're all the same. You need the person's name who you're dealing with. You need a resolution from the trustees, the directors or members, giving the person authority to act. Then you need to know who that entity is, the juristic person. Not Jurassic Park, juristic person. And that juristic person is... If it's a, a company, you need these things here, the core 14s, the core 15, the next A, the, the uh, directors, the, all of those things you need. Those first three or this one, do you understand? It's either or. For the closed corporation, you need the CK1 or 2. And then you need a letter from the accounting officers and the proof of the address of the company. This is not hard. Most people understand this. So all you have to do is ask for it. And anyway, Angela's going to come back and say, hey, you haven't given it to me. You better give it to me. Otherwise, I'm going to need to tell. So that's what she's like. That's how she speaks. Let's listen to her. It's true. Um, a deceased estates. The deceased estates are quite easy. You need, the, uh, you, need, you need the dead person's ID. You need to know who they are because they still appear on the offer to purchase. And then you need a letter of executorship a copy of the will and the executor's details. Okay, that's what you need for that. Okay, then you need to make an assessment. Then you need to decide, um, is this transaction reportable, yes or no? And if it's reportable because he's the, he's the uh, Prince of Brunei and he's got a big black bag full of money and he's paid it into our trust account, then I will report it. Okay. So what are these few risks? And I've given you the options here. A high risk person, the person that you need to tell me about, is a person who wants to pay cash for more than 24,999 Rand and 99 cents, i.e. 25,000 Rand. That's a non-citizen. That's a juristic person. Juristic person, I mean, it's a company or something. Unconcerned with details, evasive, or a person listed on 1267. Now, please, what's 1267? Who knows? Woo, Sean, have we caught you? Woo! Boom! One for Anton. <laughs> okay, 1267 is the coolest list in the world. Guys, go and look up 1267, United Nations, 1267, list of um, persons. 
and you can look up your own name there or your friends. If you've got a dodgy friend who's just like a little bit dodgy, bro, put his name in and see if he's that person. And this is the list of terrorist suspects, people that have been uh, embargoed, people who have been sanctioned, people who are on the, the watch list of FICA, FICA, who are identified as either terrorists, money launderers, or criminals to the extent that they're worldwide known. If your name's on that list, you luck like number one. You top of the pops. Okay. So... Can we, can we put Kali in there? You can put anybody you like in there. Have a look. There's some very interesting people in there. Mine was a mistake. Low-risk people, if there's a bank bond, if there's a bond involved, you, you really can relax quite a lot. Why? Because the bank's not going to do business with somebody who's a, a terrorist easily. And if it does come down, they're going to do a lot more trouble than you are. I mean, they're lending the two million rand out. All you did is sign a piece of paper. Okay. So if there's an attorney, exist, if it's an existing client that we've worked for, homogeneous, uh, one person, singular, easy, it's a, a company and a proper listed company or a professional, those people are lower risk. Okay, then they must sign this. Please, guys, you often bring this back and it's not signed by the person. This is a declaration by me telling you I'm not a terrorist. So you let me fill out everything and then you don't, I don't sign it. I mean, that's like what's that about? So you sign it, they sign it, and you sign it. Why? Why do you sign it? Because KYC, bro, you've got to know your client. So you've got to demonstrate that you've been involved in the deal. So know your client. The second one is the same for the purchaser. Seller, purchaser, same, same. Okay. You've got to know everything about your client. Right. And now the test. Oh, my word. The moment we've been waiting for. The excitement is palpable, guys. Shanae is going to go crazy with this test. Let me load it up for you. I'm going to send you this test. Can you all see it? Somebody give me a thumb. Thank you. I'm going to send you this test. And Angela is going to send you a list of some instructions with your name on. You need to sign next to your name. Now, I know this is difficult. So focus now, guys. You need to sign next to your name, not in the first open space. I say this, and I can promise you next week, I'm going to shame the person who's not signed next to their name, and there'll be at least three. Okay, so what's the competency test? I'm going to send you the test. You have to fill it in. Okay, at what stage must the identity of all parties be established? When the agreement of sale is concluded, when the offer is accepted, when money passes hands, or whenever a business relationship is established and the answer is d d thank you very much well done okay can an agent accept a mandate when can an agent accept a mandate when the seller pr proves that it's his own he owns the property only if the bond is up to date if the seller is legally allowed to sell or only after the seller's identity has been established A, B. Well, I think it's D, because even A is true. If the guy, if you don't know it's the same person, then he might be entitled to sell, but it might not be him. So it's always going to come down to identity. So thank you, Mr. Smith. I see that you listed on the CMA. Now give me your ID book. But why is your name not Smith? Oh, now I'm married to somebody else. I like it. So who owns the property then? My husband. Okay. That happens a lot, eh? Okay, if a buyer carries a suitcase with 2 million rand cash and walks into the office of an agency, the agent of the deal dealing with the buyer must chase the buyer away and refuse to take his money, ask the buyer for proof of where the money originated from, check if it's not false notes, accept the money deposited in the agent's trust account and report it to MLRO. Antin? Yes. I'm sorry yeah. to I'm sorry to take you back. Number two, yes. I think it's C. It is C. You're right. They're, they're all right, Malcolm, except that if you don't know, the, the seller can be legally allowed to sell, but it might not be that person. Do you understand? There's a fraud thing called 420, I think, in, in Nigeria, where people sell other people's property. So they'll just right. say, yeah, plot for sale, you pay the guy the money, it all goes away and it's transferred into your name. Meantime, 
it, it was Mr. Smith's property and Mr. Smith is allowed to sell the property and Mr. Smith did own the property, but the person who dealt with is Bob. It's not Mr. Smith. And that's what they're trying to get to. So you need to oh. identify the person and all those other things are also true. Though. You're quite right. Yeah. Okay, so the million rand cash. The answer. D. Okay, so you, you accept the money, but we don't, when I say accept, is that they deposit it into the trust account, and in this case, it's not the agency, but of the, um, of the transferring attorney. Okay, so you've got, no, you've got no responsibility to chase people away, to ask them where the money came from, to test if the notes are false. You just say, take your money, put it in Absa Bank, bro. Trust account. Thank you very much. And the last one. What documentation must be obtained from, a client, from clients and kept on file in terms of the Financial Intelligence Center Act number 38 of 2001 when a sale agreement is concluded? This is Angela's job. This is her passion, man. This is what she loves to do. Look through these documents. Look at her. Look at Angela. So happy with Fika around her. Okay. So do we need a copy of the ID of each signatory? You should be going like this. Practice. Do it. Good for your neck. Okay, a copy of the marriage certificate, ANC, divorce order, settlement agreement. Do we need a copy of that? You should be going like this. You don't need it. We do need it for the transaction. Why? Because at some point the attorneys are going to need it. But that's not what FICA is about. That's what transferring attorneys are about. A tax number of each signatory. No. Okay, not for FICA. Not for FICA, but yes, we do need it. We don't need it. The attorneys need it. We don't need it. Not for us. A utility bill stating the physical address. Oh, my word. They should be like, oh, I'm nodding here. Come on. Okay, easy one. And if a person is signing on behalf of another party, all the documentation of all the signatories. So if you're signing on behalf of a company, you need my ID and my proof of address. And if you buy in the name of the company, you need the company's ID and the company's name of the address. Now, the company's ID is not one document. Remember, it's the core 14, score 15, score whatever, all those things, and the CK documents or the, the, the trust documents. Okay. You guys are fikid. You guys are awesome. Thank you very much for coming. I hope you had a wonderful day. Thanks for the turnover. Are there any questions about fika that we can go through in one minute and eight seconds? <coughs> Sorry, Anton, the, the, the last number four, what was it 4C or uh, I didn't get the answer there. The, the, the answer is A, D, and E. Okay. A, so there isn't an option for it, but it's A, D, and E. <laughs> it's a trick question. I did it on purpose. <laughs> I can see. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we don't okay. need tax numbers and we don't need uh, marriage certificates. That is not FICA, unless uh, that's relevant to another party. So it's no your client. Yeah. Right, less than a minute. Thank you very much, guys. Have a lovely day. Go sell some houses. Thank you. Thank you, Anton. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.